Good afternoon, y'all. This is Leah from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Um, I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about nutraceutical support for COVID-19. We have discussed on our channel with Paul Cottrell a number of times the issue that um, in the event of an outbreak in the United States or in any other country, there's a very good likelihood that the hospital systems will become overwhelmed and it may prove to be very difficult to receive medical care. Um, additionally, there's the added problem of the fact that something like 80% of all pharmaceuticals, or at least portions of those pharmaceuticals, are produced in China. Um, so with China being a very key player in the pharmaceutical supply chain, um, it's quite possible that medicines may uh, turn out to be in short supply, given how effect affected China has been. Um, so we think it's quite important that people have non-pharmaceutical options um, to potentially help themselves recover from a COVID-19 infection or um, prevent themselves from getting infected in the first place. Um, I, now, I have to make a really important disclaimer here. <laughs> we are not doctors, we are not naturopaths, and we are not herbalists. Um, so this is all secondary research. Um, we've done our best to pull some information together that you all can use to make the best decisions for yourselves about how you might go about um, treating yourself or preventing infection in the first place. Um, but again, um, this is not authoritative um, because we are not experts in this arena. Um, I also have to issue the warning that you should not in any way assume that just because something is an herb, uh, a naturally occurring plant, that it's totally harmless. You cannot make that assumption. There are lots of herbs that will interact with other medications or uh, are not appropriate for certain medical conditions. So it is absolutely vital that you do do your own research and determine the risks um, for you and your specific situation. Um, there is a cultural problem, in my opinion, um, that over the course of a number of decades, um, we as a population have been taught that we're not capable of finding answers to questions, that we have to rely on the experts, and in this case, uh, the doctors. Only the doctors can tell us what is correct. Um, well, guess what? Sometimes the ex experts and the doctors don't actually know everything, or sometimes they are behind the times. Sometimes they are not up on the most recent research, um, and it, you can do your own research. It's amazing the information that you can learn from Google. Um, I'm blown away by how many people are not aware of the fact that you can plug a question into Google and get an answer most of the time. Um, so just please take it upon yourself to do additional research to make sure that what you're doing is safe and appropriate for you. Um, be responsible for yourself. We have been taught uh, strongly to be dependent upon experts and the powers that be, and that really puts all of us at a major disadvantage unless we recognize that and move forward with our own research. So please do that. Um, as a general rule throughout life, not just for this. Um, one last note here, simply because it's on this first page that I'm about to discuss. Um, I do have on this first page some reference dosages. Typically, these are reference dosages for specific conditions. Um, I do not have the research on applying any of these herbs to a viral infection. Um, I don't know that anyone has actually done that research. Certainly it has not been done with this specific virus, um, but that is all I can provide is a guess about what kind of dosage you might be looking at. Um, so there's limited research in that department, so please be aware of that. Um, this first page, um, these are five, well technically six, herbs um, that Paul deduced from a paper. Um, in 2007, um, this paper, specific plant terpenoids and lignoids possess potent antiviral activities against severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus. This paper was produced in 2007 um, by some Taiwan, Taiwanese researchers. 
um, and they tested 221 compounds that are found naturally in plants uh, to determine how effective they were in assisting people uh, in recovery from SARS. Um, so out of this paper, which is quite interesting, but um, also quite technical, um, Paul figured out that these five herbs are probably the best bets um, for dealing with COVID-19. So they are birch bark, forskolin, calendula, relora, and licorice. Um, so, and we'll also what he determined was that the best way to administer these would be, let's say, to take the birch bark and the forskolin in the morning and in the afternoon, and then take the calendula and the relora uh, around noon and then again in the evening, and that the licorice could be taken any time. Um, a couple notes about these herbs. Um, Forskolin is, covers, a, I don't know, something like six or seven different plants, uh, specific plants that are part of either the genus Coleus or Plectranthus. Um, you can look that up online, Google Forskolin, and you will find that information. But un, kind of unusually, that name Forskolin applies to a bunch of different plants. Um, also, uh, Relora. Relora is actually a brand name, and it's a combination of Magnolia officinalis and Philodendron amarense. Um, I, I have to, and all of these do have some caveats. And ladies, I'm sorry to say that um, while this will not apply to all of you, this is an important consideration. Um, Four out of five of these are really not okay if you are pregnant or trying to conceive. So please get uh, keep that in mind. Um, also, two of these, I believe, yes, birch bark and uh, and the licorice um, are both. Uh, have antiplatelet, excuse me, antiplatelet action or antithrombotic action. So if you are taking anticoagulants, otherwise known as blood thinners, you should not, um, you should not take those medicines. But all of that information is here uh, on this sheet. Oh, and I forgot to mention, most importantly, that this PDF will be up on our Facebook page, and I will include a link to that in the description box below the video. If you don't know how to get to this description box, next to the title of the video, there's a little gray arrow pointing down or up. Um, click on that and you will see the description of the video and the link will be in there. Um, so these are probably very good bets. However, they're not going to be appropriate for everybody. Um, in which case, you could explore some of these other herbs. I have a sort of long list of herbs here that um, may be antiviral, anti-inflammatory, or have other benefits. Um, so these are some things that you can consider. Um, some of these will address specific things. So as an example, the first thing on this list is olive leaf, um, which is cilia protective. Cilia are these little hairs in your lungs uh, and nose that help move mucus around. Um, so protecting the cells that have cilia is gonna be very important um, because the cilia will help move mucus out of the lungs as an example. Um, I did include elderberry on this list. I don't know a whole lot about it, but as I understand it, while elder, elder, elderberry is a very well-known antiviral, um, a few people have noted that it can cause a cytokine storm, um, which is essentially part of your immune system um, doing what it's supposed to do, but overreacting um, and causing further health problems. In fact, cytokine storm was a major issue with the, Span the 1918 Spanish flu and is the reason why with Spanish flu, more often than not, healthy people uh, died rather than less healthy people because the healthy people had well-functioning immune systems that essentially overreacted. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, another note, one thing that popped up on this list as an antiviral is St. John's wort. Um, but St. John's wort is well known to interact with psychiatric medications like SSRIs. So if you were taking SSRIs, do not use uh, uh, St. John's wort. Um, I also learned in the process some interesting little facts. Um, sweet gum and star anise here, um, both of these contain something called shikimic acid, um, which is what Tamiflu is derived from, and Tamiflu is used to treat influenza, so that's kind of interesting. Um, also, uh, I did read briefly that red algae um, may actually help the body produce interferon. Um, interferon is used in the treatment of a number of diseases, including cancer and I believe HIV. Um, and your body does produce it naturally, but this, but this may help produce it more. And that may also apply to other marine algaes and seaweeds. Um, also on this list is cordyceps, which is a mushroom. Um, and I've gotten some little tidbits here and there lately that there may be other mushrooms that are um, particularly helpful uh, in terms of being antivirals. Uh, in fact, um, I just learned yesterday, due to the interview that Paul did with Dr. Gordon Peterson, Pedersen, excuse me, um, which is right here on the channel, Dr. Gordon Pedersen discusses the history of silver meds. Um, so according to Dr. Pedersen, most mushrooms uh, absorb, uh, bring up a lot of silver out of the soil and that is the reason why they can be uh, potently antiviral. So that's an interesting note. Um, other things that you can consider to add to your regimen um, that seem important, having a potent source of vitamin C or any other antioxidants such as zinc or grapeseed extract um, or vitamin E um, all of these things will help your body filter out foreign substances. Um, we can also consider structured silver or colloidal silver. Again, I would refer you to Diamond's interview last night with Dr. Gordon Pedersen on structured silver and why structured silver may be better than colloidal silver. Um, <clears throat> C6, C60 is an option as well as thieves oil, um, which would be used topically, or N1 oil. Um, you can learn more about that by checking out Diamond's interview with Todd Kleckner. Um, and that interview is ways to protect your family with thieves oil blend. So N1 oil is thieves oil with some added oils that Todd Kleckner is producing. Um, and this is his website. Um, he is quite busy with business and you can place an order, but you may have to wait a little while to get it back to get your order. Um, so that is, those are options as well. Um, also kind of interesting, um, a viewer sent us, um, some pages from a book called Herbal Antivirals by Stephen Herod Buner. This is that book here. It is available on Amazon, and perhaps we will put this in our preparedness store. Um, very interesting. Thank you to the viewer who sent this in. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name right now. Um, there's some excellent research in this book about antiviral herbs specifically for SARS. Um, so again, this is sort of similar to the paper that Paul used to deduce these five herbs as being very helpful. Um, but you know, both SARS and COVID-19 are coronaviruses. Um, so uh, with something like, I don't know, 76% similarity um, and a similar, similar way of uh, attaching to ACE, the ACE2 receptor. Um, so these may also be helpful for COVID-19. So again, I will post this PDF uh, up on our Facebook page and it will be in images and then there will also be a link um, to the Facebook post uh, in the description box under this video which again click the arrow next to the title of the video and then you can view the description box. 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share it with like-minded individuals. We are with you getting ready for the reality of a likely outbreak in the United States. And hopefully we can all get through this together with less chaos than we might be anticipating. Um, please don't panic. Please don't get too scared. Just prepare. Um, and you will get through this and you will be okay. Take care. Bye.